Welcome back boys and girls, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM and in this video we are going to be talking about Akka typed actors and in particular we're going to discuss actors state. Now this video is for people getting started with Akka typed actors so we'll look at how we can keep state inside of an actor in a few different ways. Now this video assumes that you know some of the principles of Akka actors. Now in short, Standard multi-threaded or parallel applications are a general pain in the neck to write because of concurrency issues. So managing threads is a pain in the neck most of the time. So in Aqua we design applications in terms of these computational entities that we call actors, which are fully encapsulated objects whose state we cannot really access directly, but we can only interact with an actor via an asynchronous message exchange. Now message passing and handling eliminates the need for us to manage threads and concurrency while making it easy to write massively distributed systems so no locks needed so no general concurrency issues now I'm going to write some code in this video so as always I recommend that you code with me and whenever you need to refresh your memory on these topics and techniques I'm about to write just refer back to this video or to its written form on the blog with the link in the description now for this video I'm going to start a new application so I have an object here in my development environment which I recommend that you do as well and for this video I'm going to use the Akka 2.6 typed version of the library so if you go to your build.sbt you will see here uh, or you will need to add your own Akka version so I'm going to add a 2.6 version of the library you can choose any patch version you like I think at the moment of this recording Akka has reached 2.6.10 or something like that and you will need to add this line over here com type save Akka percent percent Akka actor typed and then insert your favorite Akka version in your library dependencies and then reload your SBT dependencies to install the library. Now if you need some more time you can pause the video to do that but assuming that you have your Aqua library already installed and running you can also by the way you can find these library dependencies on the blog article uh, then I'm going to get back to my actual code and I'm going to start a main method just in case we need to test something and for this example we will write an actor that reacts to external messages from the world by changing its happiness level originally starting at zero. So for this example I'm going to define a bunch of messages starting with a trait that I'm going to call simple thing like the simple things in life like eating chocolate or doing some sort of chore and so on and so forth that might increase or decrease this actor's internal happiness. So I'm going to create a case object I'm going to call eat chocolate which extends this simple thing. I'm going to create a case object let's call this wash dishes or some kind of chore which extends simple thing and I'm going to add another case object just for the sake of variety I'm going to say learn Akka which I'm expecting will bump your happiness level by a lot so I'm going to extend simple thing as well and I'm going to define this actor with a mutable piece of data also known as state by defining its behavior so you know that in Akka typed actors are defined or described by their behavior so I'm going to define a value that I'm going to call emotional mutable actor mutable in the sense that it can store a mutable state and this is of type behavior and I'm going to import behavior from aqua actor type so I'm going to say behavior of simple thing and the simple thing is the type of messages that this actor is allowed to receive and I'm going to use the construct to set up this actor I'm going to say behavior is plural so I'm going to type it like this and then I'm going to click um, option enter or alt enter on Windows and I'm going to import behaviors from the Scala DSL package. So behaviors is an object that has a bunch of factory methods that will spawn behaviors for us. I'm going to use behaviors.setup. And behaviors.setup takes a function from an actor context. And then here we will need to spin up the actor state or we can spawn child actors and so on and so forth and at the very end of this lambda we will need to return the behavior of the actor. So I'm going to create this actor state with a simple variable so I'm going to define a var happiness starting at zero. 
Now, the end result of this lambda is going to be another behavior, so I'm going to use another construct from this behaviors object. I'm going to say behaviors plural dot receive message. And receive message, as you may have already read from the ACA basics, receive message takes a function that um, takes an argument of type t, in this case, simple thing, and then returns the new behavior that the actor will have after processing that individual message. So I'm going to use a receive message, and I'm going to inject a partial function inside to handle all the cases. So I'm going to say case e chocolate. And um, as a reaction to eat chocolate, I'm going to log something so that we can see our data in the console. So I'm going to say context log info. And I'm going to write something like uh, I'm going to inject my happiness here so that we can keep track of it. Eating chocolate, getting a shot of dopamine. All right. And um, I'm going to mutate my happiness variable. So I'm going to say happiness plus equals one. And then to keep my same behavior, I'm going to return behaviors plural dot same. Behaviors dot same is a, a way to keep the exact same behavior to the next message that this actor will receive. And I'm going to basically duplicate these cases to the other uh, message types that the actor might support. So in case we get, for example, wash dishes, I'm going to print my happiness and I'm going to print something else like doing a chore, womp womp. And I'm going to decrease my happiness, for example, by two, and I'm going to keep the same behavior. And in case I get learn Alka, I'm going to print the same happiness. And I'm going to say, learning Akka, this is cool, or something. And uh, I'm going to expect that your happiness just bumps up by a huge value like 100. And in case I receive anything else, just to be super sure, I'm going to uh, do a very similar thing. I'm going to copy most of this stuff. I'm not going to mutate my happiness, but I'm going to keep the same behavior. And the message is going to be something like received something I don't know. All right, so this actor can treat every individual message differently, but whatever it does, it will keep the same behavior and it will mutate its happiness according to the kind of message that it receives. So this is not really rocket science. Now, if we wanted to test this actor, all we have to do is back this behavior by an actual actor system and then fire a few message to the actor that is the root guardian of the system. So I'm going to define an actor system in my main. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to define a val, let's call this emotional actor system as actor system. And you need to import actor system from aqua actor type. So make sure you use the right actor system. And I'm going to pass in this behavior. So I'm going to say emotional mutable actor. And I'm going to give this system a name. Let's call this emotional system. Now this actor system can interact via messages with or we can interact with it via messages because it also uh, contains its root actor. And I'm going to say emotional actor system tell, for example, e chocolate. And I'm going to send a bunch of messages. So I'm going to say emotional actor system e chocolate a few times. Let's send a wash dishes. And let's also send a learn aka. And at the end, I'm going to say actor system terminate to make sure that the resources are uh, released gracefully. So I'm going to in, uh, inject a, an artificial thread sleep to make sure that the, all the messages have been properly set. And then I'm going to say emotional actor system terminate. Now, in production, you would not use thread sleep to terminate this actor system. You would terminate via some sort of an external call or callback. All right. But uh, in this very simple test, I'm going to simply wait a second and just terminate the actor system. Now, I'm going to right click and run this application to see the log lines that we get. So I'm going to right click and run the compiler. 
and then I'm going to see some log lines in my console. And after a second, the application terminated. Now, a word of warning, if you don't see these log lines or log lines that look like this in your own console, it means that you haven't properly set up your log appender and uh, Aka needs some special configurations to do that. You don't need to concern yourself with that. That will distract from the goal of this video. Instead, if you don't see log lines to your console, instead of context log info, just use print line, all right? So use print line to simply show these strings to the console. Now, let's inspect the log lines. I'm only concerned with the actual strings. So notice that the actor started at happiness zero, eating chocolate, and then with the next message, its happiness turned to one, and then the next message happiness turned to two, and then after the, the third eating chocolate, the happiness turned to three. And after the chore, happiness dropped back to one. So this is the value of the happiness before the effect of that particular message. And after this message, after learning Aka, I'm pretty sure the happiness of this actor just jumped to 101. So in short, this is how we can make a very stateful actor by using the, contra the construct behaviors.setup and um, given an actor context, we have the scope of this lambda to spin up some initial stuff that will get created when the actor is uh, properly allocated by the actor system. And then this behavior will be assigned to this actor and ready to uh, accept messages. So in here, we have the opportunity to, to define variables or other mutable states. This is why uh, we name this actor emotional mutable actor. Now, in pure Scala, we basically hate variables and uh, just about anything mutable. So in this part, I'm going to show you how we can write the exact same actor without needing a variable. So instead of a variable, we will use a method that will take an int argument and return a behavior instead. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to define a method this time around. So I'm going to say def. I'm going to define, let's call this emotional functional actor. And instead of having a variable, I'm going to put every single variable that I have in my mutable state, and I'm going to transform those into method arguments. So I'm going to name this happiness as an int starting at zero. And the return value of this method is going to be a behavior object. So I'm going to say behavior singular with a simple, a simple thing. And because I'm not going to use a variable anymore, so I do not need to start anything before the uh, actor is ready to receive messages, I'm not going to use the construct behaviors.setup. This happens most of the time. So when you want to change an actor behavior from being stateful to being stateless in terms of what I'm doing here, you probably will not need to do behaviors.setup. Uh, that's... Uh, basically most of the time, but I'm going to say behaviors dot receive and the receive takes a function that that takes two arguments, the context and the message being received. So I'm going to say receive and I'm going to use the curly brace syntax again and uh, I'm going to say context and message. And then I'm going to do basically the same pattern match on the message. So I'm going to copy all these cases and then I'm going to say message match. And then I'm going to paste the cases inside. Now, notice that once you paste the cases, the logic basically stays the, stays the same. And the compiler gives you the warnings of mutating the initial, uh, the original mutable state. But in this case, you have a method argument. And so you can't change it. Rather, instead of changing the, the previous variable and returning the same behavior, you will need to return a new behavior. And so I'm going to call this emotional functional actor method again with a new value of my happiness. I'm going to say happiness plus one. And I'm going to do the same for the other cases. So emotional functional actor with happiness minus two. And here I'm going to say emotional functional actor with happiness plus 100. So the point is that the actor that is backed by this behavior, upon receiving a message, the message will run through this pattern match. And assuming this message is, for example, an eat chocolate, we will do the logging thing. And the behavior that this actor will be for the next message is going to be the object returned by this new call.
And so this will be the new behavior. And this new behavior will be applied at every case. So we will call this method again for every case with the appropriate new argument. This is the technique that I wanted to show in this video, how to turn an actor from stateful with variables to stateless in the sense that every piece of stateful or mutable information you now pass as method arguments in the form of immutable values. And whenever you need to mutate your state, instead you create a new behavior by calling this method again with a new value for that particular argument. And uh, sure enough, if we go test this new actor, instead of emotional mutable actor, I'm going to use emotional functional actor. And uh, I don't even need to pass an argument here because my happiness starts at a default value of zero. I will right click and run my application and I will expect basically the same log lines. So look at that. We have eating chocolate, getting a shot of dopamine three times with a happiness zero, one, and two, and then doing a chore from happiness three, it drops to one, and then learning Aka, this is cool. So basically the same log lines. So the steps to turn a stateful actor into stateless would be to turn your actor behavior as a method. This, is, this will be the first step. And the arguments of the method will be immutable versions of the pieces of data that you use to hold. And uh, the second piece is that if you created your stateful actor with behaviors.setup, which was necessary for you to initialize your immutable state, you'll now no prob probably no longer need it. And so in this case, I use behaviors receive or even behaviors dot receive message, which only takes a message as an argument. Now, most of the time, stateful actors will keep the same behavior after the reception of a message. And if you look at the previous example, we simply mutated the state and then always return behaviors.same because we never actually need to change our behavior. Now, in this case, with every message reception, you'll change the behavior to a new method call with the new arguments depending on the data that you need to change. And in this case, we change the happiness counter. Now, you may be wondering whether calling this method again in this message handler, so we're basically uh, calling this method from within its own definition, um, you may be wondering whether this is a recursive call and can blow up the stack if you receive too many messages. Now, this is an interesting uh, topic. Now, this so-called recursive call is detected by the compiler because you're calling the same method from within its own definition. This is not actually truly recursive. And the reason is the following. When a thread schedules this actor for execution, it will dequeue messages off its own mailbox. Now, once it handles a message, it will create a new behavior, which is a new uh, call of this uh, method or whatever your method is. But this method returns immediately with a new behavior object. So this method returns a new behavior. It doesn't call itself forever or recursively. So the thread will simply apply this new returned object to the actor so that when the actor is scheduled again for execution and it handles the uh, next message, that particular object will be the handler of the message. So this is not a true recursive call. So in the process of transforming a stateful actor into, into a stateless one, do not be afraid to call the same method at any time in your message handler. All right, so I hope this was useful. You learned how to define state inside of an actor and how to turn it into a functional stateless actor with Aka typed actors. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And uh, give me feedback in the comments. I read every single one. And follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material. And also check out the Rock the JVM website. We have tons of material like this on Scala and functional programming and Aka as well. Until next time, I'm Daniel signing off. <laughs>